Yo, what's up, everybody? Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. It looks like the market is down, but we got some crypto news that we're going to be covering right now. So please bear with me. We got some breaking news. Grayscale deposits around $420 million worth of Bitcoin to Coinbase because now there was some a lot of ruckus turning around when it comes to Grayscale and them dumping Bitcoin on us. Well, here's the actual truth, y'all. Grayscale's not dumping Bitcoin on us because they're wanting to, right? Grayscale is closing out their GBTC, right? Um, because the customers are wanting to close out on their orders. That is just the amount of orders that's closing out for them to settle those Bitcoin futures ETF cash settlements, right? This is not for Bitcoin spot ETF. This is for GBTC. GBTC is uh, the futures cash settlement. This was what they had before we now have a Bitcoin spot ETF. Moving on. Elon Musk made a tweet saying Samsung, Toshiba, I don't know how to pronounce that name, and Motorola. But if you look at this, S-A-T-O-S-H-I-N-A-K-I-A-M-O-T-O, that stands for Satoshi Nakamoto. And this rumor still has been going around for quite some time saying that it's actually a group of entities that actually created Bitcoin and not one person. But I can beg to differ. I mean, we won't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is until we know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. And I even and I don't even believe the governments even know that was one of those things where they were trying to dump on the market. But moving on. JP Morgan says that there's a chance of a spot Ethereum ETF getting approved by May, which is 50 50. Now, what's so interesting about this is I've said this time and time again, that if a since a Bitcoin spot ETF was approved, we will see multiple digital asset ETFs. All you have to do, well, because you already have the framework for an ETF when it comes to digital assets. All you have to do is remove the name, the original name, which is Bitcoin, and then put any other digital asset out there and then tell who's going to custody that digital asset that you're referring to in the new spot ETF paperwork and framework. That's really all you have to do. It will then be up to the up to the decision of the current SEC regime to say whether or not a Bitcoin, whether or not not a Bitcoin, but whether or not any other digital asset ETF will be approved. Now, just a few days ago, the SEC delayed an Ethereum decision on whether or not an ETF for the Ethereum digital asset will be approved or denied. So. It was funny because I made a joke about it a few days ago saying, well, we're going to wait another 15 years to figure out whether or not an ETH ETF is going to be approved. We might as well keep doing what we did for Bitcoin. And I think that was very interesting. Moving on. An analyst in TA says XDC is heading to $1.40 to $1.70. Well, he actually says we're going to $1.77 think that was pretty interesting so now the tweet that we're actually going to be talking about today that's relating to xrp and ripple is this tweet right here we believe as blockchains improve in fees and performance the potential use case that are unlocked grew exponentially improving the economics and experience for the end users cannot be overstated now, this is very interesting. What do you think that he's talking about? Because I can guarantee that I know what they're talking about. Could it be because of this right here? Ripple CTO David Schwartz has pitched the merits of the XRP ledger to be to the behemoth asset manager, manager Franklin Tippleton. Do you think that could be a main reason why that they made that post? Because, folks, what you tend to forget, what we tend to forget is XRP was designed to have everything on the XRPL. Everything is supposed to have everything is supposed to be tokenized on the XRPL. You can, and this company right here was supposed to do it by the name of Sologenic. If you remember a few years ago, they came out and said that they were going to be tokenizing 
every ETF and every asset on the XRPM. I don't know if they continue to do it, but that's what started the, t the path towards tokenization. Well, with the stablecoin bill that hopefully gets approved, that will deem a stablecoin a legal tender. Well, if a stablecoin is deemed legal tender, you can then put assets and have asset have assets back to that legal tender. It goes to that rumor that says XRP is going to be a high value stablecoin. Well, if XRP is considered a high value stablecoin and that stablecoin bill finally passes, I think it was HR 4677 uh, for clarification on stablecoin and payments. I believe that that's the actual number. Don't quote me if I'm wrong. Don't hate me. Don't shoot the messenger. But if that is the case, then that means gold will be put on at the XRP and be backed by XRP. We will pretty much be you could they could pretty much potentially put the gold standard back on XRP if it's going to be considered a high stable value coin. Now that's important because since the XRP ledger was pitched to Franklin Templeton, Franklin Templeton already shows in their tweets that they're gung ho and that they're bulls when it comes to bitcoin and other digital assets and how they work and how they can make transactions seamless cost efficient and very valuable so if that happens we will see something major and something huge and this right here from jack the rippler says boom the public xrp ledger will have the same value as the private ledger it almost has to be central banks will use cbdc's on the on the private XRP ledger to bridge value from A to B by using the bridge currency XRP. XRP can't be dirt cheap. And that's that thing that I was telling you about. If XRP was at $10,000 a token, right? Because eventually it will be. Everybody says there's some people that don't believe it. Look, I'm in the Bitcoin. I'm in the Litecoin. I'm in the XTC. I'm in the Cardano. I'm into Ethereum. And I don't have any ill will towards XRP. I love XRP, right? XRP is a sleeping giant. And people don't understand that if 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 people complained about Bitcoin, saying that Bitcoin would never reach $100, well, guess how much Bitcoin reached? It reached 70000 a coin. It reached 70000 a coin. And you mean to tell me if Bitcoin reaches 600,000, the XRP is still going to be at 54 cents? Well, what world are you living in? Because I want to know, because if if and when Bitcoin reaches $600,000 a token or $700,000 a token, you best believe that XRP will be valued between 200 and 100 dollars. The math that some people are saying is not mathing. It does not make sense because. <clears throat> Let's just go back real quick. Sorry, but we're still going to talk about XRP. But let's go back real quick. Since there's so Bitcoin was seventy thousand dollars when there was a one point two trillion dollar market cap. Kathy was from Ark Investments. I already said that she she predicts a minimum of a six hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin within the near future to close to twenty twenty five, if not sooner. And with the having coming up here in April and May, that cuts Bitcoin down from six point one two five to 3.125 bitcoin in the mining rewards so let's do the math bitcoin was at 70k at 1.2 trillion dollars now if 10 trillion go into the market directly into bitcoin you will have a 700k bitcoin if 15 trillion go into the market you have a 1 million fifty thousand dollar bitcoin and you can't tell me in what world that we're living in right now that there is not going to be a 20 to a hundred dollar XRP but back to the XRP well if banks need to do a two million dollar transaction and XRP was at ten thousand dollars they would only need 200 XRP to make that transaction let's listen to what David Schwartz is talking about about the XRP yeah. listen the question is will the value of XRP be the same on the in the private ledgers as it is on the public the value proposition of XRP is that it has this, these liquidity pools. It, it, it doesn't make sense to isolate stuff. Like there's no place where gold is worth twice as much as it is now, because if there was, people would just bring gold there and they would write it, they would put, they would buy gold somewhere else and they would sell it there. Um, unless the only way that you can have the value be very different in two places is if there's a lot of friction. 
And if there's friction, someone will make a business of removing that friction. So I don't see any realistic scenario where XRP has significantly different value unless something's wrong. Like a good example of a case, there was a time where the value of XRP, in, they called it the kimchi premium, right? Where the value of XRP in some Asian countries was very high, but that was because there were capital controls, right? That was because things were bad. Um, I think that's a sign that something is not going well. The value proposition of XRP is that you can take it to all of the places, right? If I sell you some gold and you say, hey, this gold can only be used in jewelry, you're like, well, that kind of sucks. I don't want that gold, right? The value proposition of gold is that you have access to the entire value proposition of gold. And so I don't, I don't see any scenario in which pieces, where it makes sense to snip pieces off, of, again, unless something is wrong. And there you have it. XRP cannot be dirt cheap. Now, to bring to bring it all the way home, Brad Garlinghouse yesterday at the World Economic Forum of 2024 at Davos says that XRP is the ultimate solution for financial institutions and banks like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and Bank of America. Do you see something? There was a tweet that they actually gave out, I think was in the beginning of the new year, saying, or it could have been last year, maybe in December, saying that a bank will start using XRP. Now, like I've said, it could be Bank of America, it could be JP Morgan, it could be Wells Fargo, it could be Citigroup, but it would make sense for it to be Bank of America. If Bank of America comes out and announces that XRP will be utilized for cross-border payments and payments, all the other banks will have to fall in line. And that's where I can see that XRP will instantly shoot up. That's that term literally within a blink of an eye. Let's listen to hear what Brad Gollinghouse has to say about XRP. So Ripple at its core, uh, we sell blockchain technologies and solutions to enterprises. We focus primarily on financial institutions. We started with a payment solution to do settle cross-border settlement for uh, banks, for PSPs. It, typically, cross-border payments have been slow. They've been expensive. Using these technologies, we can dramatically reduce the cost and increase the speed and efficiency. And now you're seeing financial services institutions try to get their own strategy with regard to blockchain underway. How has that changed the dynamic for Ripple? Well, I think anytime you have a new technology, it's it's nascent, and it, although crypto has kind of been around for 10 or almost 12 years, let's say, it's still new. And I think you have a lot of large organizations, even JP Morgan, despite Jamie Dimon's comments about how he thinks about crypto, they're investing heavily in blockchain technologies. Now, that being said, I think in order for blockchain to thrive and for the largest population to benefit from these technologies, you can't have insular closed networks. Like the whole point, it's kind of like the internet. The internet opened up networks. You had AOL and CompuServe and Prodigy, along comes the internet to create interoperability. Crypto does that and can do that across many banks and provide dramatic improvements to how we think about money movement and really any transaction. And there you have it. And there you have it. Financial institutions will use XRP. All right, here is a chart right here. This was from Ripple's video about the CBDC uh, program where once the CBDC is utilized on the XRPL, XRP will be used to facilitate those transactions. As you can see, this goes from institution to institution. This goes from this goes from bank, XRP, bank, XRP, bank. Folks, see, I see a trend here. XRP will be utilized for those facilitations tr transactions of CBDCs, wholesale CBDCs as well as other transactions. Once that bill passes, that clarifies and rectifies that stable coins uh, will be considered legal tenders and backed by either some type of reserve or some type of asset, then that's when we probably will see XRP's true potential. I don't know when that bill is gonna be approved, but I can guarantee you, we know that XRP is the last and the fastest to go. And when that happens, we will see lives changed for the better. We will see their great wealth transformation like none other. And then the ones that are that were complaining about Bitcoin being a scam are the same ones that are complaining about XRP being a scam. Those are the same ones that said XRP was considered a banker's coin. But if you really sit down and if you really think about it, how was XRP the banker's coin when Bitcoin was just introduced to Wall Street a week 
and four days ago that allowed banks and financial institutions to take full advantage of the financial instrument known as Bitcoin. Like if Bitcoin was not considered a banker's coin, why is Bitcoin the second largest ETF commodity? And it's only been around for Wall Street for a week and a few days. The next one is gold. Make that make sense. But one can then say, if Bitcoin is considered gold 2.0, and we're now saying XRP is the next Bitcoin, then that would mean XRP is gold 3.0. All right, y'all, that'll do it for me. Please make sure you hit the like and the, and the subscribe button if you made it this far. I appreciate you all. Looks like the market is trying to pick back up. We actually went down. Bitcoin went down below 40K. But like I said, I appreciate you all. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. I will see you and everybody else on the next one. Peace.